Good morning, everyone. It is 5.30. We don't like to sleep here on the Boca Bros Outdoors. So today, we're gonna go do a beach dive and look for our limit of 12 lobsters. Crush it on mini season, crush it on an opening day. I think they're still out there, so we're gonna go find them. The goal is to go, be in the water before the sun's up, catch our limit of lobsters, and be back here for work before anyone knows what happens. We'll see you out there. Get it? So during this time of the year when the weather is really nice, the seas are generally flat calm and we try to take advantage of diving off the beach as much as possible. There's just something different about it. It's so peaceful swimming off the beach in the pitch black and you're swimming across sand and then all of a sudden you come across your first part of reef like this and it's really not as intimidating as people may think, especially when you have the flashlight and the water's crystal clear. You can see from top to bottom no problem. So. This was our first route. We're looking in these holes. We saw a lobster antenna here, but you know, on your first drop, you're really just trying to assess the situation and look at what the rocks are around you and how you can get the lobsters out of them. So come up to the surface and try and formulate a plan and lock a lobster down. So coming down to this hole where we know that one's at and we're trying to get the snare in this small hole behind him so that he can't go further into the rock. But this hole was so small that we couldn't really push the lobster out towards the sand where you can see my buddy Sam on the left is waiting to catch him. So right here, we're just trying to get that first snare in behind him so that he can't go any deeper into the rock. And we're gonna come up one more time and talk through it and see what we can do. In there. I, was I, I saw that one. What do you think? What's that? Think he's a keeper? Now that we broke the ice, it's go time. We swim up on an area where there's quite a few lobsters hanging around. And right here underneath this ledge, we have pretty good room to work with. So rather than trying to tickle the lobster out of the hole, we're gonna snare him underneath the hole. That way he has much less of a chance of shooting out. So got him in my hand secured there. And you could see some lobster legs falling there below Sam. Um, just kind of shows that he had a lobster in his hand and he was measuring it, got a little dirty, broke some legs off. But just as quickly as Sam was up at the top, he's back down. He sees another one on the bottom and just can't contain his excitement before he gets that first one in the bag. So putting a quick measure on the first one, Sam's back down on the bottom trying to secure the second one. Swimming down here to grab the bag, time to throw these lobsters in it. Gonna go ahead and get this first one in the bag. Just getting wrapped up in the flashlight a little bit, but there we go, slides right into the bag, coming up towards the top, and there's Sam, swimming over with two in his hands. What a freaking slayer. You got four? I got a solid one. <laughs> he goes in the bag. So here we were swimming in between reef lines, came up on a little rubble pile and spotted some antennas from the top. Talking initially with Sam, we thought that this one might not be a keeper and we weren't sure if we wanted to spend the time coming to check him, but hey, if you don't go down and catch it, you really never know if it's going to be a keeper or not. So why not take the 10 seconds, go down, get a nice little catch on it. It's fun, good practice. This one had uh, quite a bit of growth too on its antennas. You can kind of see when we flip it around here, kind of unique on a smaller lobster, but gonna go ahead and give it a measure. And with these ones that are close, we always like to double or, or triple check it. You know, you wanna make sure that that gauge doesn't slide off and touch the tail like you can see there. Whoa, whoa. I mean, he, 
Yeah, it's not big, but... <laughs> it looked a lot smaller from the top. I thought it was like a... a like we saw at the rock So here we're going to get a little third-person action shot of Sam. You can see him swimming down that lobster halfway out of that ledge right there. And Sam's just going to come around him real softly with the snare and secure this lobster and pull it into his body as quickly as possible, which is critical because I can't even tell you how many times I've seen a lobster shoot out of the back end of that snare. It just happens way too often. Just cruising along here with a nice little hogfish that we had seen on the reef every now and then see a few of these but not too many in our neck of the woods so we always take the time to enjoy it this one right here is a pretty simple lobster catch so we're just going to let it play out for y'all at home So here's another one, third person of Sam, heading down. He sees the lobster on a rock. He's trying to figure out which angle to approach this thing. And you can see right here, he flips his snare over. His loop is a little bent from being used so much. So sometimes when you flip it over, it's easier to walk it underneath the lobster's tail. But you can see in that instance right there, ended up working out for him. And he got another lobster. Now with Sam, whenever he's got more breath while he's down there, he's not satisfied with just one lobster, so he's going to check out all the other rocks on his way up. And giving it a quick measure, another nice one in the bag. These are the best. You gotta love it when they're sitting outside of the holes. Sometimes they just make it too easy. We got lobster number 11 in our hand right now and Sam's heading down here to get lobster number 12 which would be our daily limit of six per person. You can see here once again he flips that snare around so that he has the bent end coming underneath the lobster and easily grabs that last lobster. So well we're all happy here thinking that we're in good shape and got our limit. We haven't measured these yet which this first one is questionable. So. Putting the red gauge on him here, we're gonna give him a, a quick measure. And once again, if that back end of the gauge falls off onto the lobster's tail, like it does in this case, the lobster's too small. But we're gonna give him a second measure with Sam's gauge anyways, and still too small. But uh, one of those two was a keeper, as you can see there. So, so to keep things real, we ended up swimming around for about another hour without any luck of finding that last lobster. So. We ended up one short of our limit with 11, which turns out to be a great morning. That is a good one. Heck yeah. Crawling back to the ocean. Get back here, buddy. What are we making today? We're gonna make some lobster roll sliders. We're gonna see what's better, the classic main lobster slider or the Connecticut version. So if you don't know what those are, we'll give you a full breakdown here and a little bit later on in the video. But for now, we're gonna get these split, pop the meat out of the shell, and pop them onto this blackstone. Catch you in a bit. Look at the presentation. How beautiful. I did not de-vein these before, so the vein is in there, but simple just pop it right out don't want that in there okay so it goes right there along that, that crease in there i thought it went yeah that makes more sense and it's all right it's probably what's inside that's gross nothing a couple antibodies oh yeah we got a burster well, we're gonna have to get all this out. Yucky. 
What's the pool? Chlorine or salt water? That's chlorine. Damn it. Yeah. Sorry, right, we can give a little fresh water bath. That's some grit. Yuck. There we go. I see why we poop them first. Mm -hmm. and salt and pepper. Probably. Look out! Look out! Oh, go! <laughs> Secret ingredient. Wow, I should run Corona ads for you. The walking lobster. <laughs> Too bad. Main lobster roll prep. Gonna go with some celery. Chives. Just give about half of these. I cut a lot for the other rolls too. Lobster. Yum. <laughs> Lemon juice. Nice little healthy squirt. A couple tablespoons. No idea. It's nice. Mayonnaise. Wow, this is looking so good. These dogs can't resist themselves. Just a little bit. We don't want to overdo it. Some salt. Ooh. Some yeah. pepper. And we're just gonna get in here and we're gonna see what we got. Add a little bit more mayonnaise if we need to and then we're going straight into the fridge to get this chilled up. Ooh. Yeah, I like that idea. Let's throw some paprika in here. I do like some paprika. All right. Wow, first try. First pull, wow. You want me to touch it with the mayo hands? A little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Toasting up the buns. Wow. One of the most important things. <laughs> to the lobster roll is to have nice buns on. Lay it right down in that nice little butter bath. I need a little bit more, huh? Fit all these buns. It's looking good. These are gonna be great. My Let's arteries go. are screaming. Let's go another section. It's hot. hot. Smoking hot. <laughs> you want tongs? Look at that. Now that's a buttered roll for your lobster. <laughs> Don't do this at home. Don't be stupid. Use tongs. Oh, that oh, looks like yeah. a good one right there. Look at that one. Oh, my. Gosh, these look delicious. Wow, wow, <laughs> it's hot really good. <laughs> Last one. Oh, this is the worst one. There it is. <sighs> so 
for that plate, that's gonna be our Connecticut style. We're gonna melt some butter, and that one's gonna be as simple as just throwing some lobster, melted butter, and chives straight into this roll. And it's gonna be delicious and not nutritious. Straight into the butter bath. Take a swim. Went for a swim, came back delicious. Mm. We got our two different styles. What we got here? Connecticut? Yep. Maine. There we go. Decent serving on each. Make sure that that butter is getting in there. There we go. These are sliders, folks. We didn't want to do full ones, but probably should have looking back. Dogs are excited. They can't contain their joy. A little bit of chives on top. And voila. Beautiful. Now, which choice one? Choice A or choice B, ladies at home? Here we go. Which one first? I'm going to go with I'm going to go with Connecticut. Believe it or not, it's really buttery. So good. So simple. So delicious. All right, that's pretty solid. It's gonna be hard to beat. This is Maine. There's a lot more going on in this one now. I'm not the biggest mayonnaise fan in the world, but we'll see how this turns out. I have no idea. Oh, I forgot to clear my palate. Not taking a bite. They're just, I don't know, I have no idea. They're so different. This one has so many flavors going on. You don't, I think you get more lobster flavor in the Connecticut and more of just the overall delicious roll flavor in the main, if that makes any sense. Both very good. We got both options here, Connecticut, Maine. Let's find out. I'm gonna start with the Connecticut. Wow, you nailed it. So buttery, but so good. Really simple, can taste the lobster. When I think of lobster roll, that's it, right there. That's what I'm gonna order. So I'm not really even giving this one a chance, but I'm gonna give it a chance. So to give it a full chance. Palette cleared. On to the main. Here we go. Whoa. 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 That's really good. That's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. I've never, <clears throat> I've never had a main lobster roll before, but really the mayo is not as overpowering as I thought it would be. But you still don't get the lobster flavor that you get out of the Connecticut roll. So if I had to choose, going with the classic, with the classic to Connecticut. But let us know what you think at home.